Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. On the 18th of April in 75, hardly a man is now alive who remembers that famous day and year. In 1861, Henry Longfellow's poem on Paul Revere's Midnight Ride memorialized a 12 and a half mile journey to rally local militiamen to fight the British Army. Because of Longfellow, Paul Revere and his journey remain a symbol of American perseverance during the American Revolution in the eyes of many today. However, a lesser known story detailing the efforts of women in the war remained tucked away in the public view until the 1940s and still remains obscured in the eyes of the average American. It is the story of a 16-year-old girl whose actions demonstrated true dedication to her country, Sybil Ludington. While the historical accuracy of the events surrounding Sybil's own midnight ride have been brought under scrutiny in recent years, many still view it as a plausible account. On April 27th of 1777, Two years after Paul Revere's ride and two years into the revolution, a man knocks on the door of Colonel Henry Ludington of Kent, New York, and a commander in the Dutchess County Militia. The British were marching on Danbury, where the region's militia kept their firearms and other weapons. It was up to the colonel to gather his men to cut them off. As the story goes, no one was available to make the arduous journey. 16-year-old Sybil tells her father she will go round up the men. She rode 40 miles that night, alerting 400 members of the militia. Some claim she rode bareback, others claim she rode side saddle, refusing to put on trousers for the trek. While Danbury was taken by the British, Sybil's story remains that of a true revolutionary heroine. Sybil herself left no details about her ride, and the first official publication regarding her journey was a brief mention in a memoir about her father written by his grandchildren. Historians know little else about Sybil's life after her mysterious ride. Sybil married a man by the name of Edmund Ogden. He passed away after they had one child. A document we have recently found informs us that Sybil petitioned to receive military pension to support herself and the child. She was denied as she had no legal proof of their marriage. We know she later became an innkeeper and her son went on to be a successful lawyer. The story of Sybil's courageous rally of the militia did not appear until the mid-1880s. This was about 100 years after the Revolutionary War, and a resurgence in American identity and patriotism came about through stories. This period is where we also find stories originating about Betsy Ross and the American flag, and many other American legends. While Sybil Ludington may not have actually ridden 40 miles on horseback, Her story sparked new waves of support for the United States and became a popular symbol for women's suffrage. Her tale also helps us understand the perspective of people at this time in regards to their country. Support for the United States was crucial at this point, as the country was still recovering from the Civil War. Stories like Sybil's helped the country feel united again. Sybil Ludington became a symbol for women's suffrage and the impact women can have on history. She had statues built in her honor, poems written about her, and even had a postage stamp displaying her on it in 1975. The possible path she took is marked with signs in New York State today, and a person could go trace her steps. The National Rifle Association even has an award named after her. Sybil is culturally recognized as a key figure in the American Revolutionary War. The more information and education people receive about Sybil and her courage as a teenager can greatly influence our perspectives on the impacts of groups typically neglected by history. Her story not only gives us a new look on women at this time, but also on children. Today, stories like Sybil's can give children, teenagers, and adults alike the courage to fight for their beliefs and spark a greater involvement in the things impacting their lives.